medical care, which is cost effective and in time. So my feeling is we need to change our mindset. And we should have, as we become the ambassadors of not only your cure health care, but correct health care, prevent health care, and also, though I am an allopathic doctor, I feel for chronic disorders, we have a long history of Ayurveda and homeopathy. And also Yunani should not shy away to accept that if a disorder cannot be put right, we are not understood. We have the institutions and possibility as offering that care for the benefit of mankind. Thank you, sir. That's a very interesting observation you made. Perhaps taking a cue from what you said, before I request our other panelists to share their thoughts, as you know, and as everybody knows, today, even the Western populations, be they French or German or English or American, 50 to 60 percent of people use the complementary, you know, an alternative systems of medicine, uh, be it a very small, slight, <coughs> excuse me, illness or something like even chronic COPD or psoriasis or what, or right up to cancer. Now it's there. No, you cannot deny that. You can't poo poo that. Uh, but as you rightly said, a lot of people either do it there itself or they come here. Now uh, I would request you, sir. I'll I'll pick and choose if you don't mind, sir. <laughs> I'll take the liberty, and I'll take the liberty if you don't mind. We'll give the chance to others. So, what do you think of it? In other words, non-allopathic systems of medicine as part of medical tourism, and where do we stand? How should we do it? Well, I think uh, it. As Dr. Lard has mentioned, we are trying to export the soft power to other countries to say that there is India is not just a country of one billion people, and it is not just a you know a big middle class who is going to buy a lot of things. So you come to the India. So basically, we have to uh, one of the way of soft power is to market all the other things like Ayurveda and homeopathy because that's a huge. Uh, Infra uh, not exactly infrastructure, but that's a huge science which is there, which is not being really tapped. I mean, we, we talk about Ayurveda being developed in India, but I don't know whether we have really done any actual uh, scientific research in finding out various new techniques, because it is there. I don't know whether any real uh, big research is being done, any kind of, uh, you know, money is put by companies to develop new drugs or new uh, modalities or, you know, validate them with the today's existing thing. Today, people look at Ayurveda as more of an exotic thing, uh, you know, in terms of any massage or some kind of a stress relieving thing rather than actual medical cure for any acute conditions. So I think that can be changed if a lot of pharmaceutical companies, they participate in finding out because I came from KM hospital and in the pharmac department in KM hospital, they used to do some uh, real uh, research about various Ayurvedic preparations to find out whether these are really useful uh, by doing proper trials and conducting proper studies. And that sort of a thing has to be taken up by some of the companies who are participating here. Because unless we come up and research and present that to the world that, okay, these are certain things uh, which are uh, available with us and these are new techniques, new technologies, new drugs, which are originated from Ayurveda, which was initially just by uh, watching it. There was no scientific study done so far. I think that is what we need to do if we really want to market in a big way. And it, it should not be just limited to uh, Ayurveda means just uh, some sort of a, a stress relieving therapy and the massage therapy and various kinds of oils and other things. I think that is a very limited way. Okay, a very interesting point. We have the stalwart of homeopathy sitting right next to me. Sir, but before I come to you, bef sir, sir, before I come to you, kindly hold on. I will rephrase this point. We have an expert who has already internationalized homeopathy. He is not only looking at acute disease, he is looking at chronic disease, he is looking at uh, lifestyle disorders, he is looking at wellness related issues, he is doing everything. But have we done a similar thing with Ayurveda, which is traditionally Indian, whereas homeopathy is German? What do you think about that? Well, I think uh, as I said, in Ayurveda today, it's not really very well popularized. But if you go to only Kerala, you see a lot of this. Okay. But 
that could be replicated across the country. And one of the reasons why in, in Kerala so many international uh, tourists are going and many of them enjoy that. So we need to look at that. Honestly, I probably it should be a part of holistic care. Then we can attract a lot more Western world to this country for a chronic ailments, rehabilitation, some of those things, it may, it may work very well. I mean, acute ailments, probably allopathy, is because it's evidence-based medicine, that's what today people want. Okay. okay. Thank you. Again, I'll request you to wait for a minute because <laughs> you see, in India, you see, when I was a student, I entered second MBBS in 1962, and uh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my very first bedside experience was my professor would say, well, you're going to get a lot of quashiorkas and marasmus and you'll get hypoproteinemias and stuff like that. And you'll have vitamin deficiency, you'll have beriberi, scurvy, you name it, you'll get it. But I'm afraid today we don't get beriberis and scurvies, okay? And we are also not dying of typhoid <laughs> and smallpox, <laughs> okay? Now we have got a whole gamut of non-communicable diseases in India which have become epidemic, yeah? Thanks to what they call as coca colonization. You know, you start drinking coke, you are laying the seeds, you know, sowing the seeds of diabetes and so on, yeah, which they proved in Papua New Guinea, I was told. To make a long story short, we in India have a lot of non-communicable diseases problem and we have lifestyle problems because we have tremendous economic pressure on our young population. People are, even my own son, who is hardly in his late 30s, is down with so many things, yeah? Can we exploit, sir, I'll come to you now because we have heard him, of course I'll give him a chance to. <laughs> can we exploit traditional Indian medicine there and can we leverage it for wellness related problems? What do you, what's your take on that? Uh, problem with the society is uh, ours is an emerging uh, country. People who dwell in Mumbai or any other metropolis are busy copying uh, lifestyles that exist in New York or any other developed capital of the world. So this is a reality. Whether we like it or not, degenerative diseases, lifestyle diseases are not only here to stay, but they are here in an epidemic proportion. Now, the benefits of prevention will be seen 40 years from today if we embark on it today and make it compulsory. The problem with the average Indian, both in cities and uh, villages is that we simply don't like to exercise. We simply don't believe in discipline. So we have indiscipline when it comes to eating. We have indiscipline when it comes to life in general. So the price to pay is all these lifestyle diseases. So what is the solution forward? The solution forward is that when the kids are in school, at least one of the subjects should be devoted to how we lead a very good moralistic life. How we lead a very good healthy life for which both exercise and moral values are extremely important. I'm very sad to admit that I'm an Indian, but Indians are the most immoral people on this planet. Counterfeit drugs, we are killing fellow Indians by producing counterfeit drugs. The previous session was simply alarming. I was a little surprised that the audience didn't rise up to that occasion. How can we produce a counterfeit drug and be let loose in the market and people die from it? This is where the law of the land has failed and this is where I fully side with Aam Admi Party that the current lot, the current rot that has happened in the society because of whatever reason, they are very right in their thinking. Coming back to the last point, that we need to inculcate, <laughs> we certainly need to inculcate very good moral values and exercise being an integral part of our life. These two acts will take care of lifestyle diseases of our country. Thank you, sir. Now, sir, <laughs> finally it's up to you. How, how are you leveraging homeopathy to promote tourism in India, medical tourism in India. After hearing you, I'm going to request you, sir, how you've already talked about allopathic tourism, right? In your own way. 
Now, I would like to re rephrase and paraphrase whatever you said in the context of medical tourism in India after we listen to Sir's thoughts on homeopathy. Is it okay? Certainly. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for all your wonderful thoughts on alternative medicine. I've already, in the morning session, given lots of double-blind trials and evidence, clinical evidence, in favor of homeopathy, so we're not going to repeat that. I think sticking to the topic of, uh, of medical tourism, generally for alternative medicine and especially for homeopathy, I'd like to say three things. The first, I think, is that the infrastructure in India is not really developed to take care of medical tourism. I think a person from Dubai who spends two and a half hours to fly into the, con into the city, and because all our major hospitals and tourist destinations, medical tourist destinations are in big cities, and the infrastructure is so poor, that I think he spends more time traveling from the airport to the hospital as compared to what he does flying from another country or a neighboring country down here. So I, I believe that unless we improve our infrastructure uh, in the cities, I don't think we can actually attract medical tourism the way we should. The second point that I want to make is that, which also goes for Ayurveda and homeopathy, is that unless we have standardization of quality and medical outcomes, we cannot really claim our, even a little bit in the, you know, in the sun, our place in the sun, as far as medical tourism is concerned. And the third thing that I want to mention, uh, which I think is equally important, is that as Indians, I don't think we know how to project ourselves. And we certainly don't know how to market our own skills. And I think unless we learn how to do that very, you know, vocally and internationally, through multi-forums, through internet, through multimedia, 